the channel. I am Rags. That's right, I've hijacked the channel. Oh, oh yes, this is what we've got in stock. And uh, you know what? I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. Alan, don't take over. Hi guys. Um, so, yeah, Rags has introduced us. Uh, welcome back to the channel today. Um, what we've got in front of us, for those who've already probably noticed and read the box already, it does say somewhere, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures All the Loot Bundle. This is the uh, Changes Constant and City Full Bundle that was released, I believe it was last year in America and for the most Kickstarters, uh, Kickstarter backers. This um, is part of, um, Leanne and I backed the Batman Animated Series All In Bundle last, I want to say May or June, something like that, in September. They, or August rather, they said, look, you know, we're going to have some turtle stuff um, back in for the uh, add-ons. So if someone wants to get some add-ons, now's the time to do it. They went live in September. We put it down. Uh, I've been waiting for 11 months. 11 long months of no communication, not much communication. This is when it's going to arrive. That's when it's going to arrive. Constant pushbacks. And it finally arrived. After, I, I, after it arrived, I checked the Kickstarter page for the Batman board game. And they said the EU uh, uh, hubs have the turtles games. Um, and they'll be shipping out starting this week. Can you get an email? I had no email, but I don't care because it's here. So I don't care about emails. It's here finally after 11 months of purchasing it. And we're going to unbox it and show you what's inside. If you're from America or you've backed this previously, you might already know what's in here. But feel free to give this a watch. Oh, hello. You just nipped at me. Um, <laughs> just give us a watch and, uh, you know, let us know what you think. Um, oh, hello. Okay, time to go. Time to go. Come on. Time to go. Rex, come on, off you go, there we go, we need to get him off anyway to open the box, so hang on, hang on. Ah, cat hat, that's not pleasant, I got enough hair on my own, thanks Rex. Um, excuse the disheveled look, I've been doing gardening and cementing in the garden, my hands are shot, so as I do the close-up shots as, as we open the individual boxes, excuse the state of my hands, they're a bit rough at the moment, it is what it is. So Mr. Slice is making another appearance. This has been sat on our dining room table for nine hours and only now getting to open it. I am very eager to see what's inside this and we wanted to wait to open it until we could film it and show you guys. Um, it's very well taped. Like, wow, I'm having trouble slicing through that. Okay. I'm having a lot of trouble slicing through this. Nearly there. Whew. Whew. Oh, I left no slabs really. My arm's kind of hurting as well, so that's fun. Oh. Leanne, have you uh, to the honest for me, please? Oh. Uh, i get my glamorous assistant. Not so glamorous. I don't have any makeup on today. <laughs> this is well taped. Mm. See what I mean? It's not just me, right? Okay, here we go. Thank you, Dan. I'm gonna put this knife safety first, guys. The knife goes away. Ah, here we go. Ho, ho, ho. Okay. Okay. I guess there's gonna be a lot of weird noises, I guarantee you guys that. Okay. So it's, it's pretty well packed. Um, I'm just gonna try and tilt it towards to show it's pretty well packed. So first we've got, yeah. Oh my God, that's heavy. Change is constant. Hopefully there's not too much glare of the cellophane on that one. Um, that is some really nice artwork. Oh. Anyone who is a fan of Turtles and hasn't read the current ongoing IDW Turtles series, get on it, it is superb. Right, I'm gonna pull this one up next just to make my life a bit easier if I can get my fingers on it. Again, another quite a chunky box. This is like an expansion. That's City Fall. Again, with some pretty killer artwork on the front of good old Shredder. And then we've got, what's this? I have no idea what that is. Pizza Spinner Backers. Oh, are these health dials? They look like health dials. So we'll have a look at that when we get to that point. We've got the Secret History of the Foot Clan expansion. Got a little crying on that. Then we've got all the, oh my God, that's just as heavy as the core box, the stretch goals. So these will be probably the extra, um, 
sculpts for the miniatures um, and extra cards and anything like that. I don't actually remember fully what's in this box because it has been such a long time. Uh, let's say 11 months since we purchased it. Straighten that out a little bit. Okay, and then we've got four individual boxes in here. Five individual boxes in here. Apparently I can't count. Math? Who needs math? Uh, sorry for the crumblings. So we've got deviations pack. So I'm assuming it's extra sculpts for the turtles. I'm not going to read anything on the backs just yet. That's going to be for a moment when, a moment when we reset. Villain upgrade pack. We've got the savage slash pack. We've got the loner raf pack. Raf pack. And we've got the Stan Sakai pack. We've used Sagi or Jimbo. Uh, is it? No. Is it Usagi or Jimbo? No, it's not the rabbit. We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, so that's what's in that huge box. We're going to do a quick reset, get myself comfortable to open all these boxes. We'll see you in a Kawabunga. Kawabunga, thanks for rejoining us. God, that feels so cheesy. Um, okay, so I'm going to start opening the boxes one by one. I do apologize for any glare off the cellophane, but once the cellophane's gone, that will probably help. I am going to take that off first because I'm getting some nasty glare from our dining room windows. So I'm just going to slice through this on the back. What I'll do then is read the back and some of the big sort of components that are in there and, and what is included in the box, as it were. And then we'll get to re into the nitty gritty of opening the box. Just want to check that. And that one in the box aiming yes okay so hopefully that's not glaring as badly as it was this is the first part of the game change is constant there is something on the side of that box i'll look into that after um so the blurb in the back is battle with your brothers through the streets of new york city to defend your town from the sinister baxter stockman and his technological terrors Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Changes Constance is a scenario-driven game created in IDW's Adventures Universe game system. So anyone who's got the former uh, Shadows of the Past, which I'm using here as the uh, backdrop for the models when I show off the models, um, the Batman Animated Series uh, board game that is coming is also included in that system. Um, they're cross-compatible, so you can play Turtles in the Batman game, you can play Batman in the Turtles games. They're very uniform, and that's why they call it the Universal System, which is a fantastic system. I can't wait to get my hands on the Batman one um, as well. Um, so each adventure system game is both standalone and compatible with other games in the system. Play as one of the four Ninja Turtles or take on the role of Baxter and command his robot fleet, including the menacing Mega Mouser. This all new entry into the adventure system features a brand new campaign and two different modes of play. One versus many and fully cooperative. So you get 59 custom miniatures, 23 custom dice, 145 cards, 25 oversized cards, 4 base clips, 8 double-sided map tiles, 290 tokens, <laughs> 1 run tracker bookmark, 1 rule book, and 2 scenario books. So I'll just spin it round to the back. Maybe we'll get to see everything that's in this box in a moment anyway once I've re once we reopened it. Once I've opened it. I'm opening this for the first time. I haven't recellophaned it, honestly. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, this has been so long, and it is so suctioned. <laughs> oh, I can't get it. It's got such vacuum on it, I can't even get the box on. Uh, bear with me, guys. Bear with me. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> oh, good grief. Hey, there it goes. So let's pop that there. A bit of a background almost. Okay, so I'm going to turn this to face me. Okay, so we've got... Change is Constant Adventure Comic Part 1. So this will be like a scenario book for any other board game. So it'll tell you how to set the scenarios and what the win conditions are. But it does also give some unique comic book art as well. So I'm going to pop that there briefly. Some nice comic book artwork to show and highlight the scenario and give it some backstory as well, which is pretty cool. Um, the Shadows of the Past had a very similar system, which is really cool. I really enjoy that. And then part two. So it's quite a long campaign, which is quite nice. Uh, this must be the rule book. Yeah, so this tells you how to play the actual game itself. Um, okay, on the back it does have a little advert for the Mutanimals uh, campaign. Coming 2020. Hmm. Coming 2020. It's currently August 
third, twenty twenty one. Um, there is rumours that IDW aren't making uh, many board games anymore, for whatever reasons. I don't know what they are, but I, that's that's only rumours at the moment. Okay, so yeah, so if they haven't coloured the turtles in this one. Start pulling some of that. Oh, there's some protective sticky stuff on the side. Oh, it's well packed, I'll give them that. Okay, so start off with. Oh, these are really hard to get out. One of the mouses. Again, please excuse the state of my fingers. I have been working quite a lot today in the garden. That's one of the mouses, the aforementioned mechanical menaces that Baxter Stockman creates. That's really, that's a good sort of size on that. I like that. I like that a lot. There's quite a lot of them. I'm assuming they're going to be quite easy to destroy. But then you've got the Mega Mouser. In comparison <laughs> to that guy. That's quite substantial, to say the least. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a pretty ch um, chunky weight. There's a good. <gasps> oh, I got hiccups. It's a good weight to that. So two seconds. So that does it. <clears throat> okay. Next up, we've got Leonardo. So what I've done, I've pulled the models from the Shadows of the Past box to show the differences. So this is the one from the new one, which has changed the constant. And then we've got Leonardo from Shadows of the Past. Again, these are the first time I've seen the, the new models. I've not opened these before. But it, it already feels like there's a quite a significant weight difference. I think they're made from different material and the sculpt is a lot more detailed. Hopefully the camera's picked that up. But that is a tremendous sculpt job on that. Then we got Donatello. His bow staff. I was, it was, it was, Donatello was probably my third favourite turtle. I kind of associate with the geeky type and the nerdy technology type. So I kind of associate more with him, but I always thought Raphael was the best because he's like the loner, the bad guy, the, the cool one almost, you know. Uh, Michelangelo. I do like the skateboard on that one. <laughs> that is phenomenal. It's hard to turn this one with just one hand. <laughs> you have to get two hands on this one. But again, just looking at the shell, that detailing. That's incredible. That's really cool. Then, where is. There he is. And there's Raphael. Looks like someone from a Die Hard movie, just like. Aah! So then we've got the general sort of foot clan. Oh, I think it's just one sculpt for the foot clan ninjas. Looks like it. So there's multiples of these because obviously you do get to, there's a lot of foot clan ninjas. I know I've seen the films or the TV series is plural or the comic books, you know, there's a lot of different foot clan ninjas. They all wear the same uniform. The sculpts are the same. It would have been nice to have maybe more than one sculpt. But I can understand the logistics and the costs uh, affecting that as well. Um, if these are anything like the previous game, this is a gunner. I do like the new sculpts. They are a lot more detailed than the previous one. And I want to get around to start painting a lot of these models. And obviously time being a constraint. But the, the detailing on these is probably going to be easier than the detailing on the previous Turtles ones. Just because of the fact that... The, the the actual sculpt detail pulls out a lot nicer. This is a brawler, I think. Could be a bruiser, I don't remember specifically. It's been a little while since we played the Shadows of the Past game. There's that chap. Then we've got... Okay, let me just pull up the other unique tote characters a sec. Just so I know which ones haven't been shown yet. Oh, that's cool. Gonna leave him to last. Okay, so then we've got 
Good old Baxter, Baxter Stockman. Crazy scientist guy. Um, anyone who remembers the original Turtles cartoon from the 80s knows he turned into that fly mutated creature. Uh, about three episodes in, I think it was. Then we've got Old Hob in the books. This is becoming one of my absolute favourite characters. He's just such a renegade and such a badass. But he does have some heart as well, which is kind of what you need sometimes. I think Liam will probably like that character because he's a cat. He's a mutated cat. Uh, that one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Next we have Alopex. I think it's like an arctic or a snow fox mutation, if I remember correctly. Some sort of fox. But she's a badass, the absolute badass. Um, in the previous board game, I played her as, as a villain quite a lot. Um, and she's phenomenal. Last up in this particular one for the Sculpts is good old Casey Jones. Complete with hockey sticks, cricket bat. I think it's a baseball bat. That's superb. What a sculpt. That's amazing. Love that. Okay, so I think that's it for the models, unless there's more underneath the, the other stuff that's still in the box, but we shall find out in a moment. So then we've got all these punch out tokens cars, buildings, health trackers of some sort. I'm not going to open those right now, I'm going to follow those because it's probably going to get glare alive, I'll remember that a sec. Um, we've got the villain control boards and the initiative deck and the terrain colour guides. So hopefully that's not glaring too much, actually I'll put it over here. If I put it there, and kind of tells you how to control the villains, tells you how the run scenario should go, or the run summaries rather. And then on the other side we've got a terrain colour guide. So on the board you'll have tiles which might have a yellow outline on them. That particular outline is slow terrain, a red is rough terrain, so forth. So you have to abide by these when moving through particular terrains. Um, I think one of the slow terrains is you take one extra action uh, movement cost to get into and out of or through the, the terrain, if I remember correctly. Again, it's been a while since we played Shadows of the Past, um, but it's, it's something to that effect. Okay, oh, hello. Okay. And just stand up for that a sec. So then we've got the boards themselves. Um, which I'll is going to be a tight, so I won't pull those up just yet. But just to show some of the detailing. So these are double-sided boards. They come with different things. So this one has a pizza shop in it, for example, called Ninja Pizza. The building on the top, that would be elevated terrain. These are the streets. So depending on where you're fighting, if you drop down there, you might take damage because it's a long fall or things like that. So there's the boards. Uh, much like our previous unboxings, I'm not going to open all the cards in front of you because that would be pretty dull. But then we've got some turtle skills on the back of these cards. for actually really pretty sweet artwork on there. That's incredible artwork. I do like that. Adventure. Yep, so there's those ones. Again, I won't uh, open those and show them because that would be pretty slow. So much like Nemesis, these aren't rubber, they are hard plastic. They're tokens to ring around the bottom of the turtles to insinuate, hey, these are green. That means these guys are the turtles. As opposed to using the green plastic molds of the previous game. Got some baggies for the tokens. They did this in the last game as well. Then we've got the round tracker bookmarker. So you kind of just pop a token and it tracks which round you're on, depending on where you are. Then we've got the character cards. Again, I won't open these and show them all because again, that'd be slow. So these are the, the character base cards and the, they show the might, the speed, the movement, etc. Get a little bit of information about the characters as well and what the dice, these here is what the symbols on the dice will be. So we'll get into that in a second. As I pull out the last thing in this particular box is a whole stack of dice. These are pretty cool. So I'll just pull out one. So obviously you've got red, purple. I said I'll pull out one, but that seal is, there we go. Oh, nope. 
two seconds. Technical difficulties. This bag is sealed up. It does not want to open. The end, be a die. I don't know if you're able to open it. <laughs> Get it? Whee! My glamorous assistant strikes again. So I'll just pull out one of each of the turtle's colours. So you've got blue, purple, orange and red for Donatello, Leonardo, Michelangelo and Raphael. So you'll see on this particular one, Michelangelo, he has two movements, uh, skateboards on that one. That means he has double movement if he rolls that particular side. One shell, one skateboard, one shuriken, one sword and one chi. With Leonardo, he has the double swords, so he would get twice uh, the melee cost of that particular one. I think Raphael is double shuriken. And then Donatello has the short sword and shield, so that counts as one melee and one defense. So each turtle has their own individual um, better traits, I guess is the way you would call them, but it does depend on what you roll with the dice as well. But uh, we'll, we'll get into that as we do some playthroughs of this game uh, a bit later down the line. So I'm just going to pop everything back in here quickly. And then we'll move on to the next big box. If this does tend to go a bit long, this might end up becoming two videos. But we'll see how we get on with that in the editing stage. And... That is a tight fit. Okay. That's a pretty heavy box as well. Okay, next up, ne next up, <laughs> I'm in trouble today, City 4, <coughs> again, about the same size box, I'm blinding myself, so I'm going to cut this cellophane off first, sun is not being pleasant to me today. Oh, There's nothing more satisfying than ripping off cellophane, is there? Oh, good grief. Thank you for bearing with me. <laughs> okay. So this is City 4. So this is uh, uh, an expansion or follow-up to what happens in Change of Constant. On the back end of this one, it says, It's dark times for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The Shredder has seized control of the city and worse. He's brainwashed Leonardo into joining the Foot Clan. Anyone who's read the comics knows exactly what arc this is based on. Is literally called City Fall. Again, superb. Check it out if you haven't. If you're a comics fan, if you're a Turtles fan, you owe it to yourself to read these books. Um, it's time to add more heroes to the fight. Take up arms as Splinter, April, Old Hob, Angel, or Slash, and help the Turtles take back the city. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles City Falls is a scenario driven game creating IW's, uh, IDW Edens. Uh, Adventures Universal Game System. Each Adventure System game is both standalone and compatible with other games in the system. Mix and match characters from each game to create custom scenarios. Plays one of the five new heroes or take on the role of Shredder and lead the foot to victory with his new tune in and secret weapon, Dark Leo. This all new entry into the Adventure System features a brand new campaign and two different modes of play one versus many and fully cooperative. Comes with 40 plastic miniatures, 23 dice, 183 cards. We're going to need more cards, please. Uh, 31 oversized cards, four base clips. That's the, I'm assuming, the circular green things that we showed on the just now. Eight double-sided maps, 286 tokens, one run tracker bookmark, one rule book, and one scenario book. So instead of showing the back, I'm just going to get straight into the meat and bones of this one. Oh, this one's not as vacuum-packed, thankfully. Let's pop that on top of that. <coughs> so, oh, that's a thicker one. So again, we've got the adventure comic. It's a little bit thicker than the previous one, so it looks like they didn't have enough to fill two books, so they just sort of put them all to one book. Rule book. Again, with the advert for the Mutanimals out in 2020. Um, so the standard rule book kind of thing. And then straight on the top is the miniatures. I think I'm going to go backwards on this one. Health tokens, cars, there's a USB stick token on there. Okay. So that must be on one of the scenarios. You must have to capture some data or something. Okay, there's two of those. So we've got two of the same as... It looks pretty much the same as the last one from the, the previous version. So I'm not going to go through that again. Again, the tiles are double-sided. So that's going to be Shredder's headquarters. 
That other side here looks like a bar, the snooker table. <coughs> so the rings on this one are orange. Some baggies. Again, you've got the cards. You've got Angel on this one, Angel Bridge. You've got the book token, bookmarker, splinter, and shredder. We've got didn't drop the cards. Three sets. Just like the first one. And once again, numerous dice. These dice make and break the game. It's so fun when you roll with bad things. Especially when Leanne's playing against me on the villains. Hey! Oh yeah. <laughs> she loves it. Okay. Now I know what you're all here for. Miniatures. To start on this one, so we've got oh, it's missing a head which is in the box, that should be easily fixable. I think <laughs> maybe we'll uh, we'll take a look at that. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, I see. Just put a glue on that. I'll sort that straight out. So we pull one that's not de headed. So this is another version of the foot. Two like scythes or sickles, I guess they'd be called. There's weapons on that one. <coughs> then we've got, I think that's like a foot elite or a foot brawler, something like that. I can't remember the exact names. I could look in the book, but then it probably would run the video quite long. So there's that chap. Then we've got. Doo -doo -doo. Get him back in the box. Two seconds. Nope. Doesn't go back in. There we go. Then we've got this. I think this is the foot elite actually. He's got that massive spear. I remember these guys from the previous game. Awful, awful movement, but fantastic power. So that one. Then we've got. Looks like a couple more street thug variants. chap then we've got okay okay so we're on to the named enemies then i'm going to keep him to last we've got in this particular one if i can find one uh, let's start with him let's go with slash first so and there's i think there's a terrapin is the actual mutation for this one but he's an absolute powerhouse and the same scale as the previous dog game, so I'm just going to pull out a turtle for that. You can see how much bigger that particular character is compared to Leonardo. Then we've got <laughs> the troublesome twosome. We've got Rocksteady, good old Rhino, with his sledgehammer, breaks Donnie's shell in the comics. That was a fantastic arc. And then we've got his cohort, his partner in crime, Bebop. With his chainsaw. <clears throat> so that one. It's quite a deep one, that one. And then we've got... Splinter. It's a pretty sweet sculpt for Splinter. Then we've got Old Hobbs, which is a different variation of Old Hobbs. He's got a shotgun, this one, and an overcoat. Got is that no oh, which one's that right? Okay, that one's oh I don't know which one of these is which. One of them is Angel. That's that one. That one's Angel, I think. I think. Don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. Actually, that might be April. 
Let's look that up. Pretty sure that. And then this is that might be Angel. I'm just gonna have a quick. Oh, I'm not taking this round. Have a quick scan through here. So yeah, this one in my hand now is April, and Angel was the previous figure. So yeah, I was right. <coughs> yeah. It's hard to see the gaps. Like, uh -huh. Where do they go? Uh, Kirai is next with a bow, which is pretty sweet. So Kirai is the daughter of the Shredder. And speaking of which, here's the bad boy himself, the one and only Shredder. Look at the size on those claws. I do enjoy Shredder as a character. That is fantastic. It still baffles me that in the original 80s TV series, the Shredder was voiced by the father from um, Fresh Prince of Bella. Your hairy little friend knows me as Oroko Saki. But you may call me the Shredder. Okay, so that was everything in the city for the box. There's a cat hair on it, apparently. I will now stretch across the table, pun intended, for the stretch goals box. This, if I'm right, should just be a bunch of models and possibly AI cards for the characters. We shall see. Two trays. So, oh, Stretch Gold's Adventure Comic. So more scenarios. That has a lot of scenarios. Oh, 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 yeah. I just saw some interesting characters there. Oh, I don't on my head. <clears throat> so you got a couple of extra tiles. Four or two tiles with four sides. Four different unique sides. We've got, oh, player boards. So these... You put your character board into there, and then you put your dice in there and symbolize what dice you've rolled instead of just having them lay on the table. So it's like a, like a dashboard almost. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'll say there's eight of those. That's, that's pretty sweet, actually. I like that. Yeah, so these are the character cards again. Oh, that's gonna actually probably come up quite easy so I can flick through just a couple of these. Actually, I won't because I don't wanna spoil the models. <laughs> yeah, because these are going to be the models. So these are the extra card car cards for characters that are included in the Stretch Goals box. Um, I've seen some of the models here through the flicking through that book. I don't want to spoil that because some of these are going to be amazing. More baggies. Some more dice. Different coloured dice again. So we've got the blue, yellow and a purple. The purple's quite nice actually, I like that. It's like a ivory as opposed to white. And more cards. So many cards. Okay. Oh, right. He's staying to the last one, definite. One of my favourite characters from the series um, is in this, and I'm not going to tell you who that is. Um, I'll just show you when I get to him. I'm going to save him to the last. So, we have first up some flying mouses. So, again, very dainty, very small, delicate kind of models on that one. Hands shuddering a bit there. <laughs> I'm not entirely certain what these ones are. It looks like some sort of fly mutation, almost like Baxter Stockman, but I've got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten of these. So I don't know what's going on with that. It's pretty sharp though. Sharp little buggers. Uh, this looks like a tune in from the Foot Clan, maybe? Got, bear me a sec, I'm gonna try and find some more unique sculpts. Okay, so then we've got, okay, does the book tell you everything that's in here? Sorry guys, give me a sec, that's gonna get stuck. 
Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Figure layout. Oh, there we go. So this particular one is The Stranger. I can't count the fingers on it. There you go. So this is The Stranger. I don't recall this character. Might need to do another read through of the books. <clears throat> then we've got another variation of Alopex, looking a lot less dramatic and regal almost, quite subdued. Um, this is apparently the survivor variant, so this could be when she was first sort of on the run as a mutant almost. Uh, to do, to do, to do. And we've got, oh, I missed that guy. Victor Savart, so he's a, a one only sculpt in there. So the other foot one was a uh, Savart Ninja. Reminds me of something from uh, Naruto, the way they've got the headbands and stuff on. This is that chap. Then we've got <laughs> Pigeon Pete. <laughs> oh, it's just such a funny character. I never thought I'd be excited to get a pigeon miniature. Um, then we've got uh, Metalhead. This is a robot that was created and was used to transfer Donnie's consciousness into when they thought he was going to die. Spoilers. That's pretty cool. Okay, and then we've got the Rat King. Well, yeah, I'm quite sharp bits on this one. I just caught my finger on that one. Oh, it's got a little rat on the base. I'm going to try and get a closer shot of that. That's pretty sweet. There's a couple of rats on there. <laughs> <clears throat> then we've got... Ooh, these spiky things. Foot Assassins. She's as well as something from Resident Evil with those claws, like Lady Dimitrescu. <laughs> then we've got, what have we got next? Just this one. <laughs> Okay, the fly things earlier, I wasn't sure of. That's called a fly borg. So it looks like it's a half cyborg, half fly mutation. This next one is Scratch. Oops. There's some of these characters I don't remember fully. Uh, that one. Then we've got the, uh -huh, Disintegrator Baxter Stockman in his fly form. It's pretty gruesome. But that leads more into what I remember from the Turtles TV series as a kid. Um, I used to watch this, Thundercats, Ghostbusters and Transformers um, a lot as a kid with Anyone who watches the channel, you know I tend to wear shirts that are subject matter relative. Unfortunately, I don't have any turtle shirts at the moment, so I decided to wear a Transformers one instead. Transformers. Transformers is just... Okay, next up we've got... Worm. I don't remember this one either. That's quite a hefty model on that. Turning that with my fingers is quite weighty. It feels quite solid. <laughs> it's got a weird uh, feeling to that texture, but it's cool. Then we've got Koya. That's a hell of a wingspan. Look at that. And I think we are now on to. <laughs> The big bad Leatherhead. I always loved this character as a child watching the series. 
it's just turtles, but then you've got a crocodile or an alligator. Like, come on, seriously. Wearing a hat. Alligator with a hat. Rah. <laughs> that is so badass. Cool. So that's everything from the stretch goals box. Which way does he go in? That way? That way. Um, this is that box. <clears throat> Give me a sec while I just pop everything back in to the box and move on to the next ones. Um, that one. That will go in there. Time to wait on some of these. Um, they go, they didn't do a special print on the stretch goals box, but can't win them all, I guess. Right, let me start. I'll go and grab some of the smaller boxes, guys. A bit closer for some convenience. Okay. Next up, we've got a secret history, excuse me, of the Foot Clan. This isn't going to start on this one, is it? No. Come on. No. Okay. Hard way it is. So, this expansion requires both the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures base games. Oh, they're both base games. Okay. Um, but it requires both of those to play, um, is what it says on the back there. Damn, I should stand up there, cool. Or not. The end's dying to laugh off camera. <clears throat> so, oh, there we go. I got some actual one punch out boards. So it kind of shows you what the punch outs look like. So they have different sort of icons on them. Um, don't particularly know. That's a stretch limousine. That looks like a camper van or something, something like that. That's a book, and that's the the character totems that's probably going to be so relevant to the, the individual scenarios looks like it's some sort of portal maybe I'm not quite sure what that is so again as always we've got the adventure comic there's a lot of scenarios in this one in terms of the game itself i mean just, that's, that's amazing <laughs> so many scenarios we're going to get a lot of play from this watch out for a lot of videos uh three boards in this one so that's six individual sides that looks like a temple that looks like a village, like an old Japanese-style village, maybe? Given the, the, the subject matter of the uh, game itself. Got some extra cards. The dice are pretty much the same ones as I show them, but they're just in white. Some little baggies. And then the character cards. Oroko Saki is the top one. Anyone who knows anything about turtles knows Oroko Saki is the shredder. And then we've got... Ooh. Okay, I'm going to consult the book on this one. <clears throat> so we've got... Let's have a look. Okay, so they don't specifically name them. They just say the sons. But these four... I'm just going to pop them into one shot. These four are the representation of Hamato Yoshi's sons. Hamato Yoshi being Splinter. So you've got the representation for... So you've got the representation for Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello. You can tell by the weapons that they're wielding. So that's some sort of feudal Japan kind of thing, by the looks of it. Put these, these over there. Yeah, he went there, he went there, he went there. Then we've got <laughs> Homato Yoshi himself. So this is Splinter before he became the rat that we all know and some of us love. As much as you can love a rat, I guess. That's that one. Then we've got... Do, 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 she? Kitsune. It's a pretty cool sculpt. It's a little like a gas something or other with a trail off there. That hair length is incredible. It's that particular model. Then we've got Oroko Saki. Again, before he becomes Shredder. Cape details on these are great as well. They don't feel flimsy or weak. They are quite sturdy. They're not going to break with play. They do feel really nice. And then the last model on this particular one, <laughs> it's good old Krang himself. 
I say Krang himself. Krang is a race, but General Krang. I don't know the Ultron is the name of the race, sorry. Krang is the character, that's right. I'm losing the plot. It's been a long day. So there's that one. That's pretty cool. The face in the stomach. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so there's that particular box. Quite a short one, that one. Um, so there's an expansion. So you do need the other ones to be able to play that one. <clears throat> I'm not going to try and stand this one up because it didn't work last time. I'm just going to pop that on top there. Next up, we've got Loner Raff Pack. Um, there's the seam there. I just realized I didn't read the back of that one, did I? Secret History of the Foot Clan. During the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are they unearthed the sordid details surrounding the Foot Clan's founding. Race the Shredder and his minions in modern times to track down the Ashino Himitsu, the ancient text that details the Foot Clan's history, then live out the stories within it as Oroko Saki and Hamato Yoshi in feudal Japan. Navigate foul bargains from powerful demons, serve swift justice and expose the secret history of the Foot Clan. That's pretty sick. And there's different artwork on each of the different sides of the boxes as well. So, Lona Rathpath. So, this contains three hero-specific dice, one plastic miniature, one hero sheet, and one initiative card. So, it's quite a small expansion, this particular one. I feel they probably... Ah, oh, they couldn't because of the card. So, character card. There's some sort of... These are the actual skill cards, I'm guessing. Then you've got... Oh, let me bag the dice. So, the three dice for Raphael. Lona Raff. I love that sound. Such a great sound. And then the Lona Raff miniature. Can I be reminiscent of the first Turtles movie, the first live action Turtles movie from 90? I remember seeing the cinema, I can't remember who it was, um, where he's got the trench coat and he's got the hat on and he's going through, I think it's Times Square, not Times Square, it's the park in New York, Central Park, and he bumps into Casey. And they have a bit of a tussle and they become friends. Um, so that kind of reminds me a bit of that. That's pretty cool. But again, it's all relevant to the comics. I think I've given enough spoilers for the comics here on this video today. So, whoops. But yeah, seriously, go read the comics. They're so good. Uh, okay, so Savage Slash Pack contains one plastic miniature. I'm guessing this is if you want to replace the Slash model that is in the City Fall box with a, a different sculpt. Boxes are difficult to get into. Well, that's meaty though. Look at that. He's quite a chunk on that. Hopefully the camera's picking up the detail on the shell. So that's incredible detail on that. The texture feels really nice. That's cool. So that's that particular model. <clears throat> Just as hard to get them back in the box as it is to get them out of the box. <laughs> okay, let's do this one next. So the deviations pack. Because of 29 cards, 8 oversized cards, 4 plastic miniatures and 1 scenario book. More scenarios, guys. There's going to be all the Turtles board game videos coming up, I swear. Get ready for that. You know, doing these kind of feels like Christmas, doesn't it? Nothing happened? Put me chewing my hair. Again. Okay. Okay, so again we've got the Adventure Comic, which is the scenario book. Is that Shadow Fall? I don't know. Oh, shadow. Don't, oh it's, I think it's a card um, building game that they're advertising on the back of that one. It's like a, like a deck building game. So yeah, a couple of extra scenarios in this one. Cool. Again, you need the main games to be able to play these because some of the characters in there are in that game. So you've got the character boards. Got some extra cards. Then you've got, oh wow, okay. Donatello. 
this almost reminds me of like a Mad Max kind of style. What happened if turtles took place during the apocalypse or during the Mad Max kind of world? That's pretty cool. You've got Michelangelo. With... Oh, it is nunchucks. Okay, that's really weird the way they're holding it on that, but that's quite a cool sculpt. I think it looks like claws almost. Especially this little bit here. So that's pretty sweet. And we've got oh, Leonardo, and he's bringing some extra heat with some arm claws. Very reminiscent of the Shredder, which is pretty cool. And he's obviously got his katana, just the one though. Um, yeah, the sword uh, holder on the back is just one as well. So I'm going to double check that before I went any further. So that's cool. And then we've got good old Raphael. Ah, he's got a katana. That's interesting. Maybe Leonardo gave him a katana? I don't know. Okay. Maybe the scenarios will explore that. Okay. So down to the last two boxes. If I can get this one closed. Ha! <laughs> there we go. Uh, of that. Then we've got the Stan Sakai pack that comes with 12 cards, 5 oversized cards, 5 plastic miniatures, 3 hero specific dice and 1 rule sheet. The reason this one has the extra dice is because of the extra playable character. So this, all the models in this particular one are created by Stan Sakai and the character he created. I'm, I'm pretty sure his, his character's name is Usagi Yojimbo. Let's have a look. Miyamoto Usagi. Yeah, Miyamoto Usagi. Usagi Ujimbo. Must be thinking of something else. Um, so we've got just the standard sort of contents of the pack. Got the character cards. The actual um, thingy cards for the, the, the deck. Blue and white. Or blue on white, rather, for the deck, uh, for the dice for Usagi. Which is a ninja or samurai rabbit. So then we've got... Okay, that's weird. <laughs> Is that Mikey? Yeah, Michelangelo. Looks like he's holding like a walking stick or a pipe as opposed to nunchucks, but okay. Again, it's very stylized to the the artist. Stan Sakai. Then we've got Donatello. <clears throat> Like the fact that bow staffs remain quite straight. Some models could be quite lenient to bending and moving in transport. <coughs> Leonardo, back with his double katana in this particular version. It's that one. And we've got Raphael. And then, last but not least, Miyamoto Yusagi, the Samurai Rabbit. I don't think I've ever read anything of this, apart from a crossover series with the Turtles. Um, it's quite an intriguing prospect, though. It's always one of those things where you, you kind of say, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to read more, I want to do more of this, but you never get around to it, just because time isn't on your side. Okay, so that leaves us with one pack left, or one box rather. Is it a pack? Yes, it is a pack. And that is the, that's quite heavy, Villain Upgrade Pack. So this has 60 cards, 12 oversized cards, 24 horrific, horrific 24 hero specific dice and one rule sheet. So there's no models in this one, okay. So I guess you just use the models from previous, the core games, your Shredder, Kurai, Rocksteady, Bebop. Back to the stock ones on the, on the cover of the box. Let's have a 
have a look. I'll explain why it's quite heavy as well, because it's literally just paper, there's no... Eh. Okay. Uh, so they've labelled the dice, that's cool. So Shredder's Dice, Karai's Dice, Bewatch's Dice, Rockstar. Okay, so that's cool. They've got updated cards, I'm assuming. Again, without comparing them directly, I don't know if these are, are much of a change to the previous cards that we've seen. But then I don't know if these cards were included in the previous ones because they haven't opened them yet. And again, same, we've got normal cards there. And then it's a bit of a dusty packet, but it's a buttload of dice. Buttloads of dice. So there's that. So that's the entirety of the all in all the loot bundle, I think they called it. Um, for the particular Turtles game, uh, Changes Constant and City Fall. Um, as I say, this is going to be cross-compatible with the new Batman game that is due at some point in the late summer, hopefully. Um, I did, we are being a bit cagey on this, but I'm looking forward to that nonetheless. And obviously we'll do an unboxing of that when it does hit. Um, I can't get this box to close. Two seconds. Um... But yeah, with all the, all the scenarios and everything in this, we're very eager to get them to, stuck into this. We waited 11 months for it. So we're going to have some really good times playing this and we'll record some and upload some for you guys to watch as well. So um, thank you for joining me. That was the unboxing of that. Um, let us know what you think. Did you pick this up? Have you played it? Do you have a favourite scenario? Who do you recommend as the, the best turtle to play as if we are doing them as like that? Who was your favourite turtle growing up? Did you watch it? Who did you think was the best turtle? Did you did you bat for Shredder or did you prefer the turtles and Splinter? You know, let us know in the comments. Join the social media on the your channels that are in the cut in the description below. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so when we do put gameplay up, you know it's there. Give us a watch and thank you so much as well for everyone who subscribes and watches the channel and just enjoys our content in general. We shall see you next time.